Batman Day. It's upon us once again. Yes, it's a real holiday. It has been ever since 2014. And over the decades, there have been many people that have portrayed the character. But the question is, who is the best Batman? Hmm. Let's talk about it. So before we jump into it, let's go over a few things. First, this is my list, not the list. I'm sure it's wrong, and I'm sure you'll tell me exactly what's wrong about it. Next, these are just portrayals of the character. So that does require an actor bringing the character to life. So there'll be no comic book arcs as much as I love some of those. And lastly, I know there's gonna be plenty of them, not even a part of this list. So with that, let's jump into it. Coming in very last at unlucky number 13, George Clooney. I mean, someone has to be at the bottom. Old Georgie boy secured his spot pretty hardcore. 1997's Batman and Robin seemed to be more of a Batman parody than a Batman movie. Seven million. Never leave the cave without it. The weird silver highlights in the suit, the bat nipples, it's just some weird DLC that was very unnecessary. At least George redeemed himself just a little bit with a cameo in The Flash, you know, that scene. Yeah, you know. Number 12, Val Kilmer, the introduction of the infamous bat nips. Also my least favorite Batmobile across the board. The sad thing is, is that Batman Forever had such wonderful villains. You had Jim Carrey as the Riddler, Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face. It was so promising, it just didn't deliver. Number 11, Adam West. First off, let me say, there is a large gap between number 12 and number 11. I probably should just take all the other Batmans, Batmans, Batmen, Batmans, the Batman portrayals and put them in between Val Kilmer and Adam West. Let's just throw all them right in there. It was campy and lighthearted and it was aimed for children and to teach some lessons. Almost that anyone can be Batman. You had someone running around in a Halloween costume. I kid you not. When it came out on Blu-ray, me and my children and my wife, we were watching it and we had to pause it, rewind and pause a couple times because there was one scene where Adam West throws the grappling hook, I guess, the little bat rope up in the air and his cape swings around from his back and you just see back, bareback. Like it was the Velcro strap at the top of the collar and it was just Adam West's back under that cape. We found it hilarious. We died laughing. It that absolutely amazing to see. And it didn't it didn't get cut from the Blu-ray release. Adam West did reprise the role for a few animated films, which I really enjoyed. Come on, Robin. There's a bad moon on the rise. Number 10, Ben Affleck. Listen, I get some people didn't like the Batfleck but it was the most comic book accurate suit. And that Arkham style fight scene uh, that happened, I think it's called the warehouse scene in Batman v Superman was perfect. Of course, they ruin it with a few story things, the whole, why did you say that name? I don't get how they like actually teamed up because it was like, oh, your mom's Martha? My, my mom's named Martha. We should be BFFs. Play date. Honestly, I was really hoping that Snyder was setting up a Batman Beyond story. I mean, it all fits. He's 20 years as Batman. They made him look a little bit older. Like Terry McGinnis needs to enter in. Speaking of which, number nine, Will Friedle. Yes, Kevin Conroy was Batman at the very first episode, but he passes the mantle to Terry McGinnis. This was just a fresh take on Batman, at least for the 90s. A kid came in, got a cool new logo, cool new suit. It was just quite inspiring where Batman, if he were old, someone else can come in. Number eight, Jason Amara. Now I know there have been many voice actors who voiced Batman in the DC animated movies, but if you look at the main storyline, that was played by Jason. He was calm, calculated, and the world's greatest detective persona got to really shine through that story arc. He would come across cold, 
but also compassionate. I had to try. If someone can be saved, I have to try. All right, so for me, this is where it gets a little bit difficult because like my top seven, I thought was my top three till I started making this list. So number seven, Troy Baker. First off, I'm pretty convinced that Troy Baker is like the Wilhelm scream of video games. Because if you listen close enough, you'll find him in every single game out there. He was in the Telltale games. He was also Lego Batman. That's the one I'm gonna focus in on. I've already talked about it on this channel, like Lego Batman, huge part of mine and my wife's early marriage. Lego Batman 2, also a huge part of my early stages of parenthood. And this game is also one where they took all of the cutscenes and released it as its own movie. Uh, yes please. Number six, Diedrich Bader. Now he plays two different versions of the character. One is the uh, Harley Quinn series on DC Universe. I mean, HBO Max, I mean, Max. And there's also Batman Brave and the Bold. Now, this show got to introduce a lot of characters and is probably the best example of Batman being a team player. He would team up with someone different every episode, utilize their abilities to solve whatever problem they're going after. Plus, there's an entire episode with Neil Patrick Harris playing a villain called Music Meister where Batman sings. Who wouldn't love that? But if you expect me to play along with your twisted tune, she'll have to sing as high as me. Number five, Michael Keaton. Now put the pitchforks down. I know a lot of people are gonna be upset that Michael Keaton is in my number five spot. Listen, he was the live action Batman of my childhood. And I agree, at one point, he was up there for me. All of his gadgets, his Batmobile, his Batwing, he really did have all the toys. Get those wonderful toys. I guess technically there are two versions of Keaton's Batman, uh, the one he did in 89 and 92 with Batman and Batman Returns, and then the one he recently did in The Flash. Now, there is a fan theory that in The Flash, he actually plays Thomas Wayne instead of Batman because they're like, oh, he touched the picture of his wife and child instead of his mom and dad. He also answered the like, who, who are, are you? you? With, I'm the, the guy, guy that lives, lives here. here. We're looking for Bruce Wayne. Younger. But he refers to himself as Bruce. He talks about when his parents were murdered, but it doesn't matter if he plays Thomas Wayne or Bruce Wayne. He's still Batman. And we are saying the portrayal of Batman, not Bruce Wayne. Yeah. I'm Batman. Number four, Will Arnett. I'm a huge Lego fan. I'm a huge Batman fan. The two come together, please just take my money. When Will Arnett brought Batman to life in the Lego movie, I loved it. But then he got his own film. I will watch the movie. I will buy all of the Lego sets. Let's do this. One thing that was amazing in the game Lego Dimensions, you had Lego Batman meet the Lego Batman, where it's Troy Baker and Will Arnett get to meet each other. Batman? Gandalf? Batman? Ow, you landed on my back, man. I'm Batman. No, I didn't say, hey, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Number three, Robert Pattinson. Say what you want about the Twilight Knight. I friggin' loved it. This was a much more low-key, gritty, down-to-earth Batman. And seeing Batman in his second year, where he doesn't have everything figured out yet, he's just beating people to a pulp. <laughs> Not figuring out the riddles. It was just really good seeing this angry noob of a Batman. And one thing I really loved about it that had a bunch of controversy is the end of the film where he chooses to be this like beacon of hope where he's like carrying everyone out and leading them along the way and it's daylight outside and people are like, that's not Batman. No, 
that needs to be Batman. He is a hopeful superhero. Plus, a vampire naturally turns into a bat. They had to do this. Number two, Christian Bale. Batman Begins is my favorite movie in the trilogy. The other two are absolutely great, but it's more for the villains. Batman's story, I think, truly shines in the first film, even though I was quite leery to watch it because this is the movie that followed up 97's Batman and Robin. Probably still a little scarred from that. This interpretation of Batman just felt more realistic. For example, his cape had some functionality when he would go gliding, but when it wasn't in use, it kind of just hung there. It really made you feel that this Batman could actually exist in the real world. I mean, I'll give it to you. The voice was a bit crazy sometimes. Where were the other drugs going? Uh, uh, I never knew. I don't know. I swear to God. Swear to me! And number one, of course, Kevin Conroy is Batman. Kevin portrayed so many versions of Batman from TV shows to movies to video games. Batman the Animated Series pretty much is responsible for why I'm such a Batman fan today. Michael Keaton may have been the live action Batman of my childhood, but Kevin Conroy was the Batman of my childhood. And Arkham Asylum came out the year my son was born. So he's also the Batman of my adulthood. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am. Batman. And I know this list is in the wrong order. So tell me, what order should it be in? Who should be number one? And if you're still here, why not subscribe? If you're unsure about subscribing, likes are free. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Talking about Batman through the decades, this is one of my favorite mugs.